In this video, we're going to be talking about the very first words that should come out of your mouth every time you answer a question in your orals examination. And we're starting right now. Hi, I'm Tom Mullaney, and welcome back to First Gen Professor, where we discuss how academia really works. So if you're in grad school or navigating an academic career, please consider subscribing. In this video, we're going to resolve a major mistake that students make during their orals examination, which is they are asked a question, they get really stressed, and their first instinct is to just start talking. What we're going to talk about are the very first words that should come out of your mouth for every answer you give during the orals exam. So let's not delay any longer. Here are the first words you want to say, but be sure to stick around so you understand why. The first thing that you want to say for every answer you give is a table of contents, a brief, succinct overview of how many parts there are going to be to your answer and what each of those parts is named. Well, why? There are four major reasons why, and the better you understand them, the better you're going to do in the exam. The first reason you want to do this is to give yourself a reminder about the structure of the answer that you plan to give. Now this sounds strange, why would I need to remind myself? But then you need to remember that the orals exam is a highly stressful situation, and stress really wreaks havoc with cognitive operations and with peace of mind. So, when you say out loud the table of contents of the answer you're about to give, you're actually giving a reminder to yourself that you can keep coming back to over the course of your answer. So if you say there are going to be three sections to your answer and they are A, B, and C, the very fact that you have said that aloud serves as a reminder that when you are in the middle of part A, you remember what part B and part C is gonna be. Now that again sounds strange. Why would I need to remind myself when I am the one speaking? But it happens all the time. A person gets halfway through A and the stress of it basically erases what their plan was for B and C. I have seen students forget halfway where they were going with something and it really went into a kind of tailspin. So, first reason that you want to give a table of contents is that you give yourself a roadmap that your nervous, stressed out mind can follow over the course of your answer. The second reason is as important. This is by announcing a table of contents and saying how many sections they're going to be, what they're called. Again, briefly, you can maintain a balance between the different parts of your answer. If you're giving a three-part answer, you don't want part A to be half of the time and then parts B and C to be 25%. It's just going to seem off somehow. So when you say there are going to be three pieces to my uh, answer, that is cueing your own mind to kind of set a stopwatch. When you're in the course of the A component, your mind can say to itself, okay, we still have a little bit of time. All right, we might want to move on now. And now we're in B. All right, let's move to C. It keeps you honest and again, doesn't rely upon your stress-addled brain to do it by itself. Because if you don't say the table of contents out loud, there is a fair chance one part of your answer is going to balloon out of proportion, and then you're going to run out of time, get really nervous, and try to rush through the other components, which makes for a suboptimal answer. The third reason has to do with your examiners, with your professors. You need to remember that they are human beings too and like every other human being, they'd like to be provided a kind of architecture, a map of the terrain, so that they don't feel that they're wandering aimlessly with a tour guide who isn't telling them where they're going. If they ask a question and you answer, well, the first part of this answer is blah, 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 as far as they're concerned, they don't know if they're going to be two parts, three parts, seven parts, and therefore they don't know where to put the information that you're giving them. It's very comparable to the kind of signposting that we try to do in our teaching or in our writing. And you want to do the same thing for your examiners. Then they'll be able to focus on the substance of what you're saying rather than looking down at their Google Maps being like, where the hell are we? The fourth reason you want to give a table of contents is so that your examiners have the capacity to interrupt you. I know that sounds really weird because interruption is a culturally bad thing to do, but actually in the course of an orals examination, interruption can be really 
good. What do I mean? Well, let's say you give a table of contents in the beginning of your answer. I'm going to walk us through three stages of the historiography in this period, this period, this period. Let's begin. And you're smoking it. You're on point. You clearly have grasped the main argument of every one of the pieces you're discussing. You're just doing great. Well, at that point, an examiner could stop you. Okay, okay, okay. Let's move on to another question. And what they're doing there is they're actually giving you a chance to smoke yet another question. Because remember, there is a there is a time limit to the exam. So if they were to let you go on and on with a question that you have already nailed, in essence, they would be robbing you of the chance to do even better by giving you another question. Now, here's the problem. If you don't give a table of contents in the beginning of your answer, they can't really interrupt you because they don't know where you are in the question. You might have four sections to your answer, five, seven, they don't know. And so the examiner is going to be less likely to try to intercede. Again, that sounds strange, the idea that interruption during such an exam is good. But the fact of the matter is, is that it's good. And that by giving a table of contents, you enable the examiner to jump in and to actually give you yet another opportunity to shine. Well, that's it for us today. If you got something out of this video, please give it a like, please subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.